I think there's a danger with the government's policy in terms of setting up a commission to review the pension age. Uh, this commission, chaired by a senior civil servant at Revenue, will examine the sustainability and eligibility issues and outline options for the government to address issues including qualifying age, contribution rates, total contributions and eligibility requirements. You would have to be extremely naive in the extreme to believe that this commission is not going to offer a fig leaf to Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael to do what they were going to do anyway before the last general election and though they realised that the extending the working age to 60, 67 was an issue among their voters and potential other voters. Uh, but I do want to make a more general point about how the pensions if you, issue is often framed. What we continually hear is that there's a pension time bomb. The pension is unsustainable. The social insurance fund will run out if we keep paying at the present levels. The fact that people live longer seems for many economists and experts to be a disaster of sorts. Longevity seems to be a problem, and I find that amazing. We in People Before Profits start from the position that that's a huge plus, that people live longer, and it's one that should be celebrated. What's often forgotten or conveniently ignored is that while this generation is living longer, they were almost all universally much more productive during their working lives. And any sane society would see longevity and increased productivity during your work and life as something that would balance out, but not here. The second scare story around pensions is how the Social Insurance Fund and its obligations to pay the contributory pension uh, if we don't extend the ordinary lives of workers beyond 66. It's not going to happen unless it is hinted that we massively increase the amount of PRSI paid into it by workers, we will have to extend their working lives. But there's a second option rarely mentioned by anyone in government or any minister or economist, and that is that we could increase the employer's contribution to the social insurance fund. We have one of the lowest rates of employer contributions to that fund in Europe. But anything that's seen as a cost to employers is frowned upon, regardless of the level of profits in the, in, in the country uh, and in Ireland the social wage, as it is called, continues to be the poor man of Europe. But then you have to ask, what happened to the National Pension Reserve Fund? Well, it was raided. It was raided in 2009 and 2010 to a total of £20.7 billion. Why? The government raided to pay out private banks. And that is the fund that they're now saying they can't afford, and that is why people are going to have to work longer. Uh, the final point I'd like to touch on is the idea that the reason for this crisis is simply because pensions are expensive, that paying pensioners is a burden, whether that's private or public sector. It's often presented as a straightforward question of maths. It's not. The incessant noise about pension crisis and the never-ending pension scheme crisis that we see in the private and semi-state sector are not natural events They're caused, that are caused by longevity or even by the financial underfunding of the schemes of those workers concerned. A large part of the crisis is actually caused by the fact that the returns of the private investments made by the schemes has been declining over the years and decades. They have been declining because the yields and bonds and equities and even the property that many of these funds are invested in are not, it's not a natural occurrence, nor is it the fault of the workers who suffer as a result. The fall in yields is a deeper sign of the malaise in the system of capitalism. Workers see pensions as deferred wages, and they are right. It is ironic that the early struggles of the labour movement and workers in this country were fought on the right to a pension and some security when you retire. The attack on the pensioners today is part of a war on workers and ordinary decent people. And if we've learned anything in the last few months is that COVID-19 has exposed the many de deficits in our income supports for the system. But simultaneously, it has also revealed what can be achieved when there are collective efforts of civil society to ensure those social supports. So we want to support this bill wholeheartedly and we reject the idea that any independent or pretense that independent commission will come back with anything other than a fig leaf for what the government had intended to do in the first place.